Thank you, last Kieran Corla. I could thank the Kieran Corla's office for selecting this issue today. I table it because I believe a, a direct commercial air route between Ireland and Asia would open up further opportunities for the creation of new jobs and investment in our country, uh, and in particular add to the uh, potential in the tourist sector. Uh, deputies may recall that when Ireland qualified in 2002 for the World Cup in Japan and South Korea, Aer Lingus put on charter flights to Tokyo and thousands of people who went over to follow the national team, um, but unfortunately uh, a permanent never, a route never took hold. In the last number of years we've seen great progress in Ireland's aviation industry. We've now a state-of-the-art second terminal in Dublin Airport, where you can now fly to most day, more destinations than ever before in the past. Our national carrier um, is, carries flights to multiple destinations in the United States and North America. Um, they have direct routes to large metropolitan areas and hubs such as Atlanta, Charlotte, Washington DC, Philadelphia and others and I think are adding um, San Francisco shortly. Seasonal routes have been in place in some Canadian cities, um, in particular Toronto over a number of years and Ireland has never really had any problems but because of the number of carriers and the number of options re reaching the United States and North America. And furthermore we've seen direct links uh, to the Middle East. The Emirates Airlines now run a daily service to Dubai and their sister airline Etihad Airways serve Abu Dhabi both in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, yet we do not have a direct commercial air route between Ireland and the most populated continent on the planet. It's been identified time and again that um, such a route to an Asian city could be of huge potential to the Irish economy. Um, just to pick the biggest countries, China, we have Currently, worth, um, trade between the two countries is now worth about $8 billion annually. And last year, um, when the then President Xi Jinping visited Ireland, he, it created a huge interest in the very same way that the Michelle Obama's visit to Ireland and Glendalough and other places created huge interest in America. Uh, his visit at the time created massive interest in China. And Become, upon becoming president, he issued an invitation to the Count Corla to bring over a delegation of which I was part of earlier this year, where, where we got an opportunity to meet him and other senior administrators um, in the Chinese uh, government. And it's quite obvious that there is, you know, huge potential in that country alone, not to mention the other countries, Indonesia, Thailand, and others around it. Um, and since the Dáil last sat in July, three government ministers have been in China on trade missions, as I understand it, um, inc and increasing awareness amongst the Chinese business community about the potential in Ireland as an investment location. And indeed, there are many Irish, we, we visited some, several Irish companies who, are, who are, have a presence and a big presence in China, but one in particular whose global headquarters remains in Cork and who have, um, could see huge potential in further uh, business development over there. Our ambassador, who's just finished an eight year term, Declan Kelleher, has done Trojan work. He's a fluent Mandarin speaker and has done Trojan work in developing uh, Chinese Irish relationships. Um, I think we must continue to support the development of an innovation friendly regulatory framework uh, that is pro competition for aviation if Ireland is to be successful in our endeavours. We must continue to encourage new entrants into the Irish aviation sector. As I said earlier, we have a state-of-the-art uh, Terminal 2. Um, it's probably fair to say that neither terminals are over the, um, are overstretched, so it's, it's quite possible that um, they could uh, 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 you know, accommodate more capacity. Um, I realise my clock is um, just finished. I have more to say, but maybe I'll leave it for the supplementary. Thank you. I do get two minutes, do I say? I a supplementary statement for two yes. minutes. Okay. I call the Minister for Tourism, Transport, Tourism and Sport. Four minutes. Uh, th thank you very much, Lasky um, uh, Herlock. Um, Lasky and Carla, rather. Uh, enhanced, uh, access to, uh, enhanced air access to key business and tourism markets around the world has always been a key element of Ireland's aviation policy. A direct service between Ireland and Asia, particularly to or from China, would be of huge benefit to our trade relations with key Asian economies and for inbound tourism. I understand that our export trade to China alone is worth 3.8 billion with an import figure of 2.1 billion, and I believe that a direct air link would act as a stimulus to further growth in this area. Ireland has bilateral air transport agreements with a number of Asian countries, including China, India, Malaysia and Singapore. 
These agreements provide the legal framework for scheduled air services between Ireland and these countries. However, while these arrangements have been in place for quite some time, there has been very little uh, interest from the airlines in direct services. Under our agreement with China, it is open to any Irish, EU or Chinese airline to operate services between the two countries. The establishment of such a service, however, has to be market-driven, so ultimately it is a commercial decision for the airlines that are entitled to operate routes under the, under the agreement. Most of our airports and Tourism Ireland have attractive incentives and cooperative marketing programs available to encourage airlines to develop new services and to help, to help to support the new services and routes once they're up and running. DAA also recently signed a twinning agreement with uh, Beijing Capital International Airport, which will allow the two companies to coordinate uh, and to cooperate, uh, on, on, to cooperate further, uh, excuse me, will allow the two companies to cooperate uh, to further commercial and tourism links between the two cities. The agreement is also designed to enable the two airports to engage in a joint marketing initiative to deliver direct airline services between Dublin and Beijing. While we do not yet have direct air links to Asia, Ireland does have extensive one-stop connectivity with, ma with most major cities in Asia uh, through established European hubs such as Heathrow, Amsterdam, Paris and Frankfurt. And connectivity with Asia has been further enhanced in recent years with direct services from Dublin to Istanbul by Turkish Airlines uh, the commencement of um, Etihad services to Abu Dhabi in 2007, which are now 10 times a week, uh, and more recently daily Emirates services to Dubai, all offering one-stop connectivity to a large number of points in Asia through their respective hubs. As mentioned at the outset, aviation is a key enabler of economic growth, so it's important that there's a clear policy framework in place to facilitate its continued development and to optimise the contribution the sector can make to the Irish economy. As a first step in the process to develop a new national aviation policy, uh, my department and the Irish Aviation Authority hosted a conference on the 3rd of December 2012 in the National Convention Centre to hear the views of stakeholders and to start the debate on the issue. Taking account of, these, of the issues that were raised at the conference, an issues paper was published on my department's website in February 2013. The paper poses a number of questions and covers eight broad areas. Airports, air services, regulation and governance, aircraft leasing and finance, aerospace, education and training, general aviation and sustainability. A total of 74 submissions have been received in response to the consultation from a wide range of interests. The number and quality of those submissions uh, received is very encouraging and demonstrates the strong interest that there is in shaping future aviation policy in Ireland. The submissions are currently being reviewed and the intention is that uh, a draft national aviation policy statement will be issued before the end of the year, which will provide further opportunity for stakeholder input before the adoption of the new policy document in, in early 2014. The importance of connectivity generally is highlighted in a number of the submissions and the importance of direct services to Asia is also raised. The Ireland-China Association made a submission which also highlights the benefits that could follow uh, from services to China. Uh, my department and I will continue to work closely with the airport authorities, airlines and tourism agencies to encourage the development of direct air links with Asia. It's important to stress that the intention behind developing the aviation policy is to provide a clear framework for the expansion of the sector and in particular improving our international connectivity. However, the decision with regard to individual air routes will be made on a commercial basis by the airlines in question, who must be confident that they will be able to sell a sufficient number of seats uh, at a sufficient price in order to um, cover their costs and make a profit. Thank you, Minister. I now call on Deputy Andrew Doyle for a further two minutes. Thank you, Last Minister. Yeah. Could I first of all thank the Minister for coming in, taking the questions and the, the issue himself, and for his comprehensive answer. I mean, it, it goes without saying that it has to be based on a commercial um, principle that the, an airline would consider, any carrier would consider a direct route. And the fact that there are reasonable, reasonable one-stop um, alternatives in place, I suppose, is, is something that we would have to look at. But nonetheless, um, for many years in the areas of, of, of markets, we, we tended to look at the UK and Europe in the first instance, North America. Um, and we competed with countries, particularly in, in the areas of agri-food exports and tourism. Uh, with, with country, in food is in particular with the, the Australasian countries who are now um, have a, a more direct access to Asian uh, destinations, in particular Hong Kong um, and Bangkok, if not China itself directly. Um, there's other reasons why that they historically have become more have become the, the destination, uh, the, the hubs. But I do think that while the market, we're still competing with them, but our market has moved. So we need to follow it 
uh, as best we can. And the, the, it's, it goes, it's proven time and time again that you need to have as direct access as possible. For tourists, the first country they come to will be the country that they will actually visit. Um, and certainly the Emirates um, le leg does give people a direct um, part from the Middle East, a direct access from the Middle East into Ireland as opposed to a major European city. That is to be welcomed. But I think there's further potential there. I think when you look at what the potential is in China alone, and not just China, but in China alone, um, I think it's something we should encourage and work with the industry and the carriers to see if they will you know, take a risk even for a 12-month pilot initially to see how we get on. Thank, thank you. you. Deputy, final reply from the Minister, two minutes. I think, um, I think that's done and I are, are, are in broad agreement uh, on this matter. Direct services from Ireland to uh, Asia, China in particular, would be very beneficial. Uh, One-stop access is good, but it's not as good um, as direct services by any means. Um, it does, of course, have to be commercial. We're not going to use taxpayers' money to subsidise businessmen uh, uh, travelling to, to and from China. Um, uh, but the government can help and, and, and state companies can help. Uh, and what was done, for example, in relation to the San Francisco services and other, other long-haul services uh, is that Tourism Ireland can kick in with some marketing supports to promote the new route uh, and also um, the Dublin Airport Authority or, or, Shannon or any other airport uh, can offer incentives and the normal long-haul incentive for new routes that's offered by the state airports uh, is that there are no airport charges for five years. Uh, so those kind of things are there uh, and the government um, uh, can, can then step in as well with, the, um, with, with, with bilateral air services agreements and fit freedom rights where necessary. So certainly something that we're keen to see happen. Um, the improved access to the Middle East has been delivered. Uh, improved access to West Coast USA will be delivered next year. Uh, and after that, really, I think year-round uh, flights to Moscow uh, and also um, direct access to uh, China or another Asian country um, would be the next things to achieve um, on, on that list, in my view. Good morning, Sarah. Uh, second item, um, Deputy.